things up with offense coordinator, quarterbacks coach Dave Patno. Questions, uh, Rod, if you'd like to start us off. You're, you're facing an offense that likes to possess the ball, which in turn limits possessions for your offense. Does that change the way you call the game? No. Execution changes the way we call the game, right? We'd be, we'd be re very happy to <clears throat> go out there four, five, six, seven, eight, play, score a touchdown, and you know, put the D in a good position. Ultimately, for us, it's about scoring points. You have to be smart, you know, with what you're calling and what you're doing. But we're not gonna, you know, we don't change it, you know, at all. The, the biggest piece is patience on the sideline. We've been down this road so many times in the last 30 years against teams that are gonna just grind the ball out. And when you have your opportunity to do it, you have to run your offense. You have to run your tempo. You have to, you know, run your plays. You can't be concerned about, you know, what they're doing or what the score is. Your ultimate goal is to score points. And uh, if we can score points and get out and, you know, get any option team, you know, into uh, a situation where they have to come from behind, you know, that's certainly tougher on them. So, you know, the biggest piece of it is being on the sideline and being able to be patient. And when you're on the sideline, not get that feeling of anxiety because they are going to choke the clock. They are going to pound it for three yards of gain. They are going to dive, 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 you know what I mean? And so as an offensive staff, you've got to take the air out of the ball on the sideline, right? You can't just have guys sitting there stale for four or five minutes at a time, right? And you may only get eight or nine possessions. So in those eight or nine possessions, you need to be efficient with what you're doing offensively. Okay. Um, Saturday you had, I think it was 429 total yards, but obviously only 21 points. But there are also a lot of points left on the board, you know, missed passes and so forth. And so that's, I guess I would think it's a good thing you had those opportunities, but a bad that you didn't, you know, execute. And kind of, kind of how do you sort of consider that, I guess, as you – evaluate what happened on, on Saturday? Yeah, I mean, like I just said, the, at the end of the day, you got to score points, right? So, I mean, that's ultimately what we have to do. And as you go back and you watch the tape and, and you evaluate the calls, you evaluate the execution and things like that, you can take a lot of things away from it, right? Our, our execution and our tempo was good, right? We talked about it at the beginning of the year. You know, we can't hurt ourselves with penalties. We didn't. Um, our snap was great. You know, our, our functionality was great. Um, we ran the crap out of the ball, and we pounded the ball. We had 25 first downs. We were over the 50-yard line nine times. But when you're put in a position to make a play, throwing the ball down the field, whether it's up front, the cue, or a catch, right, and it's wired, we got to make plays. And I agree with you. We left too many of them on the field. You know, we had guys running open. We missed them. Had a couple of uh, issues on protection. Um, and so, you know, we had a couple opportunities at a field goal and, you know, we missed. And then, you know, I still think that Kyra got his foot down on the touchdown. You know, he has a picture of it with his foot down in bounds. Um, but that doesn't matter. I mean, you know, th those are three scores that you should have 13 more points and you hit a couple of the shots. And now you look at a 40 point game, which is what we should do. So, you know, that's a little bit of a, you know, kick in the gut when you have things that, we executed perfectly uh, throughout all camp. You know, all of those plays that we ran um, were plays that are base fundamental plays for us, and we just missed them. So, I mean, in the game, that's going to happen, right? You're not going to hit every one of them. And then we threw one to Malachi down the sideline and he made a great catch, right? So, you know, you have to have more of those explosives uh, to be able to blow the top off the score. Jordan came in off the bench and, and really sparked your offense and, and got his first real extensive playing time in, in a kind of a fair situation. Kind of what were your thoughts on his performance and, and kind of how much do you have to adjust what you're doing with him in there versus Jeff? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the thing with Jordan is he is prepared to play every game since he's been here. So it was not at all um, strange to me that he went in there and performed well. He's full of energy, right? He's fearless, uh, maybe a little too fearless, right? I, I just, I told him, listen, you are not auditioning for the U.S. gymnastics team, right? You don't have to do a triple sow cow and stick the landing, you know, when a linebacker's hitting you in the legs, right? So protect yourself, um, you know, and then we get on the sideline, he scrambles out, he tries to take the linebacker on. I'm like, you're not going to make it. 
right? You're not going to make it. You're not a fullback, right? Just get on the ground. You're a good athlete. Make the guy miss. But that's his spirit, you know what I mean? He's kind of got that thing like, hey, you know, I'm the 5'10 kid who, you know, they always didn't pick because I was 5'10, but I'm really a dude, you know, who can reverse windmill a basketball. Um, so it wasn't – he has that mentality. Um, and, you know, it, it wasn't too big for him. He went out there. He knows the offense inside and out. And, you know, the, he left a couple throws on the field. Now, he also stung that bender in there for a touchdown because he stepped and he threw it really well. But we were protected great. And Kyrick broke the kid off and ran a great route. Right? So everything starts with the guys up front. The receiver gets open. And now we have to do our job of sticking the ball on him. You know, and even he got down on that three-yard line. He pulled that ball. He was fearless. He was going in. So I think he did a great job of energizing and some brought some spirit. It was sort of a, a uh, not a Jeff Sims-like performance to start the game. Uh, when you went back and looked at, at the film, what did you see that perhaps you could put a finger on as to what was going wrong there? Yeah, I thought he was a little tight. You know, I think, I think, you know, it was the first time back under the lights, you know. He kind of choked a couple balls, didn't really, you know, didn't really drive the ball, kind of just, you know, wanted to get it out there. Um, he's like, I, like I've always said about him, he's so super critical that he doesn't want to make mistakes, you know. And our conversation was like, dude, you just got to play. Like, if you watched him the last two weeks of practice, he looked elite. I mean, he didn't miss a throw. And I kept saying to myself, wow, this is, this is impressive. But it's different, man. You get out there and there's 45,000 people here and the lights are on, you got to be able to go, you know. And he was just, you know, feeling his way through. And actually, he was running the crap out of the ball, right? I mean, he was like, I think he had, what, 40 yards rushing in like three carries, right? So he was doing that and, and carrying the ball well. Um, but I thought he was just trying to be a little bit too fine um, throwing it early on. And then he settled in. He hit, a, he hit a hitch. He started to settle in, and then he got banged up. So, um, you know. I don't think it was his best performance. I don't think he thinks it was his best performance either, but, you know, certainly stuff that we could build on. I mean, the, the, his ability to see the things that he needed to see was really good. We just got to get it on the, on the wideouts. Um, you've mentioned before, you know, that one of his traits is that he's really hard on himself. And I guess I'll ask you to play kind of dime store psychologist here. Like, is that something that you kind of, I mean, when he starts poorly, you know, the first throw misses, is that something you kind of concerned about that? can have a, a, a cumulative effect? No, it's, it's basically, you know, you get down those levels, you look him in the eye and say, dude, snap out of it, man. You know what I mean? You're good. You're good. Like, there hasn't been a, there hasn't been a quarterback in the history of football that hasn't missed a throw, right? But you can't, you can't stack those throws. Like, it can't be, like, you know, you miss a throw, you miss a throw, right? We miss, the, we miss a touchdown throw, he overthrew it, right? Come back to the next one, go to the bench, say, I got you, right? Run that route again, we're good. You know, and you can't go into a shell. You can't, you know, you can't, you just got to be out there and say, listen, I missed you. You know what I mean? And snap out of it and go to the next play. And, and he's not a rah-rah dude, but he doesn't have to be, you know. He's just got to be focused. This is what my job is. This is what we're doing. Go to the old line and say, hey, I got you. You got this. We got this. We're good. Go over and get our adjustments, get some water, and go to the next play. You know, it's just like being a reliever in baseball, right? You have to have a short memory. You have a bad throw, okay, go to the next one. You know, and you just can't let it accumulate. And, and the, thing that, the thing that is, you know, he's still a young kid. You know, he played a lot of football. He got thrown in fire, but he's still a young kid. You know what I mean? So that, that's got to be something that's a continual work in progress and uh, something that he's aware of and we have conversations about all the time. And, you know, I expect him to go out there and play a hell of a game on Saturday. Anything else for Coach Batman? It seemed like you had a lot of plays wired. Um, there was the miss to, to Gibbs on the little bit of wheel. You had the one to Nate that, that got overthrown. And then some nice plays like the option to, to Dante that got the touchdown. Um, I guess does that give you confidence you're putting those things on tape now to help loosen the run game up and that you've shown enough kind of different things that teams can't just stack the box and try yeah. to stop the run on against Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Is he using my phrase? Is he using wired? I think I think, I think, I, I, I think, I think I use wired all the time. Yeah, yeah. That's, right. At least I'm rubbing off on something. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, we – when you defend this, right, those running backs are really good, right? And our old line was, was, you know, denting the line of scrimmage, 
and they were in a they were in a run defense. Their their safety was at like nine yards. That kid must have had forty tackles, right? Because he was just down there, and and so you have to be able to put things on on tape that you can say, listen, if you do that, we have to be able to throw the ball over your head, you know, and you have to have that right mix, you know. And when you're running the ball for four and a half or five yards of carry, you just keep handing it to him. You keep handing it to him because you know if you look at the numbers, you shouldn't be able to run the ball against that defense. You know, they were playing soft man coverage, and we're still creasing them for five or six yards. And we are, you know, inches away from two or three broken 50 or 60 yard runs. So, you know, you just keep denting it in there. Um, but yeah, you have to have a great mix. We've talked about it all the time. You have to be able to take your shots. You got to be able to efficiently throw it on third down, right? But there's got to be some times you just throw the ball out to the perimeter or, you know, get the ball out there. And, you know, we have to take advantage of being able to spread people out. And, you know, even, even on that last touchdown play, you know, that was a play that we had wired for the whole, you know, for the whole preseason, really. And we were waiting on that play for either a fourth down call or a goal line call. And we had shown them a bunch of stuff in the package already, and that was the last piece of it. So, you know, you have to have all the auxiliary pieces to – the things that you're really good at and make them defend the whole field. Okay. Again, one last one. Um, I was asking Coach Collins about just the, the timeout before the throw on the fourth and goal, and I was just trying to understand like kind of the pro how that process works. Like kind of generally speaking, is it, you know, he might, you might say to him, I've got to play, or he might say to you, okay, if we're get to fourth down, we're going for it. Kind of how does that normally yeah. work? It's a little bit of both. It's a little bit of both. Sometimes we'll say, hey, this is a go. Right, you know, and, and then there's other times where he'll say, hey, you know, do you have something that you like here? And, you know, I said, yeah, we have one that, that's really good against what they're doing, you know. And, and you know, in, in that situation, right, you kick the field goal okay, right? But what's the worst thing that happens? You don't get the score. They're on the two-yard line, right? They have to drive 98 yards, right? So then you just play good D, right? You've already flipped the field, right? You take your shot. It's being uber aggressive, you know. So if we kick it, Right? If we kick it, half the people on social media and half the people in the stadium go, oh, you're soft, you kicked it. Right? And then if you go for it and you score, you're a hero. Right? And if you go for it and you miss, then you're like, you, don't, you know nothing about football. Right? So you're never going to make anybody happy. You've got to go with what your gut was. He came to me and said, hey, do you like something? I said, yeah, we went for it. I think we got it. You know, they didn't give it to us. So you know, what's the worst situation is let's pin them in and have them punt and get the ball back in midfield. Awesome. Thank you, Coach Pat. All right, guys.